welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, welcome back. If you watch my videos and if you do, I thank you so, so much. I love to upcycle clothes and turn ordinary thrifted items into fun, edgy pieces. I love all styles. I love kind of street style, edgy rock and roll. I love the feminine, lacy, boho, leg and look style. I love it all. And so I just let the garments I find at the thrift store speak to me and do whatever. Now these jeans, I gave you a little clip, the preview of what they're going to look like. And these were huge sellers for me. They never sat for very long when I listed them for sale. And um, I'm just starting with a regular men's pair of jeans. I think this look is cute baggy. So I'm normally comfortable in like a size 29. These are 31. I could have even gone 32 or 33. We're gonna cut open the sides and you'll need a little extra space to sew that back up anyway. And I'll explain all that in a little bit. But can I give you a helpful, t uh, helpful hint about when I sold? So what sizes do you list, right? Everybody's different sizes. My experience has been the larger I make, the better they sell. No matter what size you make, you're going to get an email from somebody, oh, can you, I'm a small, extra small, can you make that size? Well, you'll kind of want to, to make people happy. But for me, I would do that and they would just sit. So XXL and above really sold the best for me, maybe. Somebody else has a different experience, I don't know. So let's get started on these jeans. So the first thing I have to do with these jeans is they're way too long and I need to cut, I'm just going to cut off the bottom and leave a raw hem at the bottom and let it fray. So I am just going to cuff them up. Well, I just really need to do one side and it's best I'll just probably wear these with like a tennis shoe or a boot or a sandal. So I don't need to add a bunch of extra length for a heel or anything, but I do like mine to touch the floor and kind of drag on the floor while I'm barefoot. And then when I put a little chunky heel on, then they're still long. So I'll just cuff it up and see how much I need to cut off the bottom. Now, helpful hint about jeans. I love men's jeans. They are so easy to find in 100% cotton. Women's jeans tend to have a lot of spandex or lycra in them. And also the leg is wider and the pockets are bigger on the back and they're deeper in the front. And it's easier to find kind of a high rise from the crotch up in men's jeans. Okay, so I took a ruler and measured my cuff and it is four inches almost four inches tall. So I could just, you know, cut straight across four inches on each leg, but I feel I'm not super accurate with a lot of things. This is more artsy, but for me, I am very accurate when it comes to cutting cuffs off because I just don't want to make a mistake and have one leg longer, longer on one side or longer in back and not in front. So. I'm just a little more careful with this part. So I'll just take my ruler, put it at the bottom of my jeans and take a piece of chalk and mark four inches. And I will go all the way around my pant leg and do that. And I'll do it to the back also. And I'll do this of course on both pant legs. And that way I have a line to follow when I cut, and I know it's going to be very accurate, and so I won't cut it completely across both pieces at a time. I'll open it up. Let me get the scissors. I'll open it up and just cut one layer at a time, following those chalk marks all the way around. Okay, so now I have my cuffs cut off. And I won't need to do anything to the bottom of this. I want it to be frayed. And I'll put it in the washer and dryer a couple times and it'll fray nicely on its own. You don't really have to do anything to that. Okay, the next thing I want to do is cut these sides completely open so that I can work on these easier. It's 
very difficult to work inside of a pant leg, so I just cut my sides open, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, how I cut open the sides is there's a seam here on the side of your jeans. I cut on the back side of that. And the reason I do that is because up here, there's always, almost always, a belt loop here and a rivet here. And we need to sew these back together. And I don't want to sew or cut on the seam exactly because that rivet will get in the way when I try to sew them back together. So I go about a half an inch behind that seam and it that makes it about half an inch oops away from that belt loop so I just I did a chalk dash line here to show you where I'll cut half an inch behind that seam follow it all the way up into the waistband all the way down to the bottom of the leg and it'll be cut completely open okay now I have my sides completely cut open on both sides and what I did next was take a piece of chalk and I just drew some random rectangle shapes on both legs and I do not need them to match. I don't need them to be the exact same height or anything like that. This is kind of where, kind of an artsy eye, just do whatever you want. Maybe you want to go all the way up to the pocket and stop here. Maybe you want it only here. It's just personal preference at this point. And now I am going to just take my scissors and carefully cut out these rectangles. And then I'll have four rectangle holes in each leg. Okay, so now I have my triangles all cut out. And now I want to select, I want to do sort of a patchwork look inside these patches and I want it to, mine to be colorful so these are the items I've chosen to make my insert we'll just do one triangle insert to sew on the inside so we'll kind of piece these together but I'll show you exactly how I do that um, so a lot of these are just tops just some fun colorful boho designs and I even have a child's pair of shorts because I liked those flowers and I may just cut out a flower to put on the outside of the jeans and here's a child's little dress children's clothes have a lot of fun patterns if you're looking for patches and things like that and then here I just have a fabric remnant from another project so those are what I will be working with but if you don't want yours so loud and colorful wouldn't this be? Now here's some subtle patterns. These are also just some fabric remnants that I have from other projects, but like a pale yellow and some muted colors. So, you know, you can do whatever you like. So the first thing I need to do before cutting my colorful fabric is to see how big of a rectangle I will need. We will actually be sewing it on the inside of the pant leg, but I need to see how big of a rectangle I need and measure very generously for this because you can always trim it shorter and you can always add on to but it's easier to trim it shorter than add on if it's too small so for this one I'm measuring I'm going to go a good inch below that and a good inch above where my final cuts are here and I'm going with 17 inches so I jot these numbers down I went 17 inches by seven and a half, which brings me to about here and here. I want plenty of room to be able to sew that in there. And then this one I got 15 by eight. So you just need two measurements for two rectangles. Okay, so I don't really know why I measured those rectangles because I just kind of threw my numbers to the wind and just started cutting rectangles out of my fabrics and laying them on here making sure I had lots of room for seam allowance and things like that. And I didn't measure these triangles or use a template or anything. I just started cutting rectangles and I'm using four different fabrics and I don't want to, on mine, I don't want to lay them out exactly the same. I just kind of mixed them up here 
like this fabric is here, but over here it's here. And they're just big enough to cover my rectangles and yours will be different. So your sizes will be different. So it's almost impossible to say exactly what size everything is. Just make sure they're going to generously cover your holes. Now I am going to go to my machine and I'm going to stitch these all together. And you can either do right sides together or wrong sides together. If you do wrong sides together, you'll have a little extra seam and a little extra frame. But I think on mine, I'm going to go right sides together. So I'll take this piece, I'll lay this one on top and stitch it across here. And I'll probably use like a gold thread. I'll use a pretty small straight stitch. And when I get that one sewn, I'll take this piece and lay it on top and stitch that together. And open it up, lay this piece on top and stitch that together so that I have a solid panel. And I'll do that with both sets. Okay, I have these all pieced together. And you see, they're not perfect. Some are a little longer, some are a little shorter, but I do know it's long enough to cover my rectangles. So, I am just going to give it a good press. I always lay a tea towel over top of things like this because I don't know what some of these fabrics are and I don't want to take a chance of scorching them. So, I just like to lay a tea towel down. I give mine a little steam and just press it in those seams nice and flat. Okay, I'll do that to the next one. Okay, so now I'm coming back to my jeans and I am going to do one pant leg at a time and I'm going to open this pant leg up so that I'm working on the back side. Now, I am going to take one of my panels, and this is where you can use that measurement that we wrote down of the size of this rectangle, you if you want, and cut this nicely. But I think I'm just going to lay mine down. And you want to lay it the right side of this to the wrong side of the jeans so that you see the colors through on the other side. And I'm going to lay mine down, and I'm just going to eyeball it, make sure I have enough to sew, and I will just trim that. I just stab my finger with a needle, so I hope I don't get blood on my out my pants here. So I'm just going to trim that. I'll probably trim this kind of right along this seam here. We're just prepping it to sew. And then this one's okay. It comes down about an inch over. Now this one I wanna trim kind of along that seam also. I don't really wanna go into that seam. The less heavy duty stitching I have to do the better, right? Okay, so I have that trimmed to fit in there. And this one's good at the top also. So now I will just stick some pins in it and sew it, but I'll show you that. I'll get it pinned and then talk to you a little bit more about how I sew it, it's pretty basic. Okay, so I went ahead and did the other side too, pinned it on. And um, now I just need to go to my machine and sew this and I use a Dunham needle that I just get at Walmart. You can get them anywhere for my machine when I work with denim and I will just sew real close to the edge on these and I'll use gold thread because the jeans have gold thread and gold thread hides pretty well with a lot of different colors and so it's kind of inconspicuous on the opposite side 
So I'll just sew each one of these on. Okay, so now I have the pattern fabric all sewn on. And now we kind of have this gappiness here. I don't really like that. I don't want it to look like it's gapping off my leg. So what I have done in the past, it's not what I'm going to do right now, but, and I'll show you pictures of this. At the end of this video, I'll have three or four pictures of my past jeans that I've made and sold. And I did an embroidery stitch. I took embroidery thread and I just did a decorative, different colors, the colors of your fabrics in here, and just did some stitching here and there, which kind of made it look cool and an extra detail. But what I'm going to do is I'm still going to do a decorative stitch, but I'm going to use my machine and do a zigzag stitch. And I will use three different colors. Now this is a very old thread. And another little tip, <laughs> full of tips, right? So from experience, it's so fun to buy thread for a nickel or a bag of it for a dollar. But old thread breaks in my machine a lot. I think it just deteriorates over time. So I don't really recommend it to stitch things together. But since this is just decorative, I think it'll be okay. But isn't that kind of cool? So I will use three different thread colors. And I will do a zigzag stitch. And just like your straight stitch, a zigzag has different widths. And I'm going to use the widest width that I have so that it can really be seen. And I will do three or different lengths of stitching. So I'll probably take like my yellow and I'll go above here about two or three inches and I'll just stitch all the way down the center and go into the jean down here somewhat. Now, if you don't kind of trust yourself to make a fairly straight line, you can just draw that with a piece of chalk to give you kind of a guide. So my first stitch is, zigzag stitch is gonna be from here to here approximately. And then my next one, let's just say I'm going to use pink. I'll just go a little lower than that top one. I don't want them to all line up because I just think it's cuter to have it kind of angled. And I'll do the next one down the side. And then I'll take the third color and just come down the side on this side. And that way it's cute. We have more colors, kind of decorative because of the zigzag. And plus it prevents these from gapping. So I'll just go to my machine open this up again and work on that pant leg with a zigzag stitch. Okay, I have the zigzag stitching all done. Very cute. And now these aren't gapping, they'll fray nice still because we didn't completely stitch them closed and then at this point if you want to add a couple denim patches or maybe distress this or cut another square or rectangle and put a denim patch behind you can do that and some of the pictures that I have at the end here you'll see that I have done that on some it's really cute but what I'm going to do it's summer and I'm going to these shorts these kids shorts and I think I'm going to cut out a couple of these big flowers and I think I'll put one like right here and I'll put one on the back but I'll show that to you when I get to that point I have my flowers all cut out and I pinned one it just overlaps the corner of that top rectangle a little bit. And then on the back, oops, I pinned one. Oh, it's about almost to the knee. I wanted it to be a little above the knee. And then the next thing I'm going to do while I have them turned over like this before I sew these on, I'm just going to cut this pocket off. 
that's optional. I do it a lot because I think it's really cute how dark it is underneath here. And it just adds another little extra detail to the jeans. And then this will fray nicely. So I'm going to go to my machine now. And I'll use a gold thread and a fairly small straight stitch. And I'll just take my time and I'll just try to get close, as close to the edge on these petals as I can. And sew all the way around that. And then sew the one on the front. Now I have my flowers sewn on. And it's time to put the jeans back together. I'm going to sew these sides back together and I'll show you how I do that. So this is where it's pretty important to have a jean or denim needle because this can be a little bit tough to get through, but I've made zillions and it's totally doable. You just have to kind of take your time. I am going to sew wrong sides together and the seam will be on the outside. And it will fray when I wash it and it'll be really cute. It'll just like have a frayed line down the side. So I will start at the top. I don't ever start at the bottom because I think it's more important to have this lined up at the top in case something goes wrong somewhere where it doesn't completely line up. I think it's more important to make sure it's lined up at the top and not the bottom. And so I'll just go to my machine. I'll line that up. And I am going to do about a quarter inch seam allowance. And this top part is the toughest part to get through. Once you get past this waistband and these seams, it's easy breezy. But on this part, you may have to kind of work that knob on the outside of your sewing machine to get it in and out of the denim at first. And I will use a fairly small straight stitch. It'll be gold thread and I'll go over it twice for extra durability. Okay, I have these all sewn back together. And at this point, a lot of my jeans that I do this with, I do bleach. These I'm not going to, but I'll put a link in my description to another video I have that shows you how to bleach. So I'm just going to put these in the washer and dryer on regular cycle that I wash jeans in, and I'll come back and show you how they look on.